Hey there YouTube, uh, Don Chamberlain, Great Wave Engineering again. It's time for my almost favorite task in the whole world, tearing these fillers down to see how they're doing. Um, it's interesting as we uh, just shut them down, pull the lid lids off, you can see there's a significant difference in the amount of grunge that's on this one as opposed to this one. It isn't so significant. Now there we go. Now we get a little closer. I was going to say you can't see it that well in the uh, in the film or in the camera, but actually you can. It's quite a bit dirtier. So um, some time ago, actually after the last uh, video I posted, I received some feedback from a lady uh, and I'm not absolutely certain what she was trying to tell me, but I believe she had seen this same problem and solved that by uh, cutting some thin foam actually and forming a gasket here up at the top to uh, keep the stuff from basically coming in the back door. So I'm not even sure which filter is which at this point. Um, but we'll start tearing them apart and find out pretty quick. And so the dirtier filter is actually, once again, the uh, filter with the porous foam in it. However, um, it was located, uh, its intake is located closer to the inlet to the, uh, to the uh, Annalis River filter. So that may account for why it's seen more debris, uh, since that's where it comes up. So we'll swap them around this next time see if that holds true. There is a significant amount of difference really between the amount of dirt that get in it, that's getting into the biohome. It's hard to see here but in both cases the exterior of the biohome is uh, covered fairly, uh, fairly uniformly with some fine debris which fortunately comes right off once we rinse it. And once again, interestingly enough, the uh, initial coarse filter in the uh, uh, in this in this test filter seems to have a lot more dirt on it on the uh, on this particular side than the other one does. Uh, again, I don't have any idea what to make of that, but it's just a fact of life. Looking at the top fine foams. Uh, I can't see any significant difference between the two. So we'll tear those boxes apart, see what, the, uh, see what they look like inside. Well, I'm pretty certain that I misspoke a minute ago when I said the uh, initial uh, course filters were uh, loaded con uh, considerably differently. I believe that's simply because I had that module uh, turned over on the other side. Uh, once I get them apart, and uh, I can't be pos absolutely positive, but I think I now have them oriented uh, in the same fashion. And you can see that the amount of debris they have is really pretty similar. So that was kind of a false... Uh, false reading on my part. Um, the uh, convoluted coarse foam, the deterioration of it has continued and I would say these foams are pretty much completely gone at this point in time. Um, <laughs> they've got convolutions on the top now. You can hardly see them but there's dimples there from, uh, from where the uh, the medium foam actually, I guess, sunk into it. Uh, and the convolutions that were on the other side, facing into the water, are practically uh, gone altogether. So those are, uh, those are pretty much shot. Not uh, something I'm very happy with, but that's the way it goes. And it's uh, one of the main reasons I'm going to be switching over to, uh, to the port foam which looks pretty good. Uh, now in this case I've got two what I would consider medium foam. Well, is that true? 
Yeah, they're, uh, I think these are exactly the same foam, uh, 20 pores per inch, I believe. And uh, as a consequence, the bottom ones have really gotten uh, very heavily loaded. And that may account for why this particular filter was uh, a little harder to get going whenever I'd restart it. I have to prime it manually for a while uh, for the past couple of weeks. And I suspect that has uh, a lot to do with it right there. Um, but uh, in the very short future, I hope to have uh, some chorus port foam. So the next go around on this test, we'll be, uh, we'll be basically testing out uh, my new uh, stack and uh, see how well that performs uh, against the, uh, the filler sets that I have been selling. So uh, stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I better start cleaning up this mess. Okay then, we got everything nice and clean. We've cut some new uh, coarse foam here for the convoluted foam, which uh, had pretty much been eaten up by the bacteria. So we got some new pieces there. We'll put that back in there. We've got the uh, biohome all nicely rinsed off, so it's looking bright and shiny again. So uh, this is basically the current foam filter set that I'm currently selling. Uh, we're going to continue testing that to see how it uh, compares. Over here, we're going to start a new test with the new stack that I'm uh, planning to start selling just as soon as the stuff arrives from Germany. Um, so here we've got an inch of uh, 10 pore per inch, uh, uh, an inch of 20 pore per inch, and a half inch of uh, 30 pore per inch uh, cut to shape for this uh, flu ball. And we're going to stash that in there. Uh, and again, of course, we've got the bio home nicely cleaned up. It's looking real good. Uh, another thing I'm going to try in this test builder, uh, I got this idea from Stefan. It's Swiss Tropical, I believe. Um, in the other one, we've got the uh, ceramic rings that came with the fluval. They're not much good for anything else, and the Panguru suggested throwing them down the bottom to help trap dirt. They seem to work uh, reasonably well for that. But over here, I've chopped up some chunks of coarse foam, some, some foam that would otherwise be waste. And I'm going to put that down in the bottom of this filter and see how that works out. I suspect that uh, within a year or so, the bacteria will pretty much have consumed all this. But in the meantime, uh, if that uh, traps a lot of dirt, uh, it would be a, a good addition and it wouldn't be a very expensive thing to do. So we'll see how this works out. We'll put this baby together, get them back in operation, and away we go for another six weeks or so and then we'll see what we got. So the other trick I didn't mention, uh, I got this idea from a lady who had uh, commented on my last test. Uh, I believe this is what she had in mind. So I've cut a, uh, a gasket and didn't do a very good job of it, I see. I cut that using the, uh, the top as my uh, template and I probably should have used uh, this as the template. But at any rate, we will see if we can actually get the top on there with this thing in place. And then we'll see if it keeps some of that crap that we're seeing on the top out of the top uh, after we uh, tear it apart again. And uh, we'll see if that helps. All right, so we've uh, swapped the filters around to see if that location makes any difference in how they start up. Uh, and we started them up, and uh, boy, they both took right off without any priming, so that's always nice. They're pumping away. Uh, and it's sounding good. So uh, we shall see in uh, a while now uh, just how well those uh, how well those forms perform. Looks like there's still a little air in the system, but it's clearing up nice. And come on, let's go. It's going to be interesting to see. That is a one that gives me 
trouble printing. But I think it's probably just air in the system. Take a while to work that out. So, stay tuned, folks. About six weeks, two months, something like that. We will uh, definitely have our new phone by then. We'll see how this uh, prototype works. And I'm hoping it's going to be uh, very good. Oh, I think I just don't want to settle down around. For some reason.